So today, we're going to be putting an ignition switch into this 79 midget. Let's get going. So before we install the switch, let's take a look at the switch and some original ones. There was actually a couple of different switches that this replaces effectively. Now they do give you more than one part number as replacement switches. But basically, starting with the ignition lock introduction in 1970, this is what we had in both the B and the midget. Now, it had a larger actual switch in it and had a chrome front face here to it. Now, this is not the original key. From uh, 75 on on the midget and 74 on on the B, you basically had this switch, um, which has a smaller electrical switch in it and was painted black here. The other big difference here was the earlier ones had just bullet connectors. 74 on has this molded connector. Now, there is an in-between switch to this, but I couldn't find one that fits 73 only MGBs, where it was basically an early version of this connector, which was pretty much just bullet connectors molded together into a little rubber piece, and then they went to this. Now, when you go to buy the switches new today, you're basically, you're getting this switch here for the 73B, you cut the end off, put bullet connectors on there, and you can use it. The earlier version of the switch, today brand new, still has the big switch in it, but the very end of it here is going to be the black setup here and the newer style key that was on the late cars with pretty much just rubber bumper only. Now there was a time when these were actually pretty expensive to buy and even just this electrical part alone uh, would have cost you 80 or 100 bucks, something like that if I remember correctly. But the later switch like this when they were like 80 bucks, you could literally walk into your local parts store, pick up a switch that was for a Volkswagen Super Beetle or like a Mark I Golf or Rabbit, as we had them here in the States. And with just a little bit of filing, a couple of tiny modifications, it would easily be used in place of this switch and could be picked up for like five bucks. That's what I ran in my car for many, many years. But these days, you can pick up the whole switch, the whole thing, as a unit for between 50 and 100 bucks, depending on which one you're actually needing. And you can pick up the electrical portion only for like, you know, um, 15 or 20 to $40, depending on which one it is. Now, one other thing to note before I actually start installing this thing is you'll notice on both of these, there's no heads to the bolts like there is on this one. It's because these bolts, the originals and replacements included, are what they call shear bolts. So they're actually machined down to a thickness here that's supposed to be the right amount to where when you torque them, you can torque it to the right amount and then they break off. We're leaving you nothing to grab a hold of to, so that somebody can't just take a, a wrench or a ratchet and take those out and take it off the car to steal it. Now, some argue that it doesn't really do much anyway because it would take longer to take those bolts out than it would to just hit that with a hammer and break it. Now, I don't usually worry about taking these off. Most of my customers aren't that worried about it. They're being garage kept. They're not being left out in parking lots like when they were new. And I'm not sure for myself that I actually trust the metal urgy in these things here to know that these are going to snap off before it strips the threads out. So I don't do that. So now, of course, that makes it interesting to take these apart. How do you take them apart? Well, when we get into the car, I'll show you how I do it. So regardless of whether you're working on an MG Midget or an MGB, 
The process is pretty much identical. The only real variance is on the MGB, you have a U-joint and a steering column right up on the other side of the firewall, where on the midget you don't. So on a B, you can take it loose and just drop it down into the seat, work on everything real nice and easy, no problem. Midget, you can only flex it down just a little bit. And you don't want to flex it down very much because you can bend the shaft and you get wonky steering. But basically, there's three bolts underneath here. There are nine sixteenths. You take those out and that'll let this flex a little bit and then we can take the screws out of the cover and take the, the cowl off. Now on the MGB, all of those are captive nuts. So all you have to do is just hit it with the ratchet, unbolt them, you're done. Midget, there's nuts on the back side of all these. And the one is under the bonnet. And it's a lot easier if you have two people to do it. And when you pull it down, you have to watch for washers that are in between the mount and the bracket to properly space it within the dash here. supposed to be one more screw at the front here, but it wasn't in on this car. At least on that side. And you have to flex this down just enough to get to that screw. You don't want to flex it down any more than that. What, what, that was not in there either. Now, interestingly enough, the reason why we're replacing this is because the owner says he can't get the key out a lot of the times. Yet, coming out for me, but he still wants me to replace it because of the troubles that he's been having. So the best way to do is bring this down and then you can just flex that far enough to slide that down. And you gotta be careful not to manhandle it too much because you don't wanna break these switches or like I said, bend that shaft any. Hopefully you can see well enough, but you can see obviously there's nothing to grab a hold of here. So what you do is take a nice little prick punch here, or center punch, whatever you want to call it. And you can basically go in here, and in a midget it's a lot tighter, a little more difficult to get to. Get yourself a little dimple started. Then you start angling it. you can generally get them to start turning. It's a whole lot easier in an MGB because you can get it down here, you know, more away from the dash and you can swing at better angles than you can with the midget. Once you get it to start moving, you just keep walking it out. So with the midget, so much harder to get to this one, I ended up switching to this little nail set because I can actually get in there and get a hold of this thing a little bit better than with the prick punch. So you can see while being a bit on the fiddly side, especially on a midget, it can absolutely be done that way. So we just disconnect the connector from underneath the dash. And just go ahead and reinstall the new one. And this new one here, these bolts are going to be half inch wrench or ratchet or socket. And 
and it's way easier to install than it is to take off. Just basically, the midget is definitely a lot more difficult here. Tighten these up and generally the um, cowls will still just fit on there even with these bolt heads sticking up here. So one of the things we do notice is these tend to be a little on the tight side. It can be hard to actually get the initially plug in here at first. I have been known to take a really small like Phillips screwdriver and just kind of work them slightly just so that they, you don't end up pushing these out because they're too tight. And you just have to feel that and find out if it feels like it's going to be too tight or not. If it is, then you can just work them slightly, but not much because they want to be snug to get a good connection. And then you want to look at how all the wires are routed. And you want to look at when you take it off. And you got to watch because there's, when you put the screws through here, uh, especially on the B's, when you're, if you run the wires up where they're running through here, you can screw into them and damage them. And when you're putting the cowl on, make sure you're not pinching any wires and that they're running through the, the slots here that are made for those wires. But before we go and do all that stuff and tidy up all the wires, we want to just make sure that everything's working as it should and doing what it's supposed to do. And now we can go ahead and tighten these up. You can cut them off if you want, or you can, if you want to, try to tighten them until they break off. And then it's just a matter of putting it all back together. 